Hey, what's up, guys? Mathos97, and real quick before I get into this pay per view, there was a little bit of an issue as far as editing it, and um, when I tried to put it in a Sony Vegas, the original recorded file, for some reason, it just wasn't editing. Like, whenever I would try to make an edit, it would just freeze up the program. So, I just exported the whole th I put it into Roxio and just exported the file without any commentary on it. And then when I did that, for some reason, the audio was all laggy. So, you can probably hear a little bit in the background, but it was all laggy for some reason. So, um, I took, I scrapped the audio completely and added some, some sort of like weird music in, or not, not weird, but I just added in pretty much uh, what I used in the preview for this. I threw like the little pay-per-view theme song in there and some instrumentals in the background and a few superstar themes, but... I don't know, I wasn't sure whether to just leave it silent or to put a little, at least something in there, so I decided to do that. But the audio was like skipping and stuff, and it would lag and get, um, it would like lag, and the uh, video would be off place. So I also, that was another reason why I had to scrap the audio, and if you see some like weird transitions that it barely even transitioned anything, that's because the audio was off a little bit, so I had to adjust it while I was editing it, so um, I just scrapped little parts of the video out that had no audio. So that way I didn't have to be like, oh, skip to here to get the audio, you know, I just figured I'd just scrap it and put some sort of like little transition in there to make it look somewhat professional, I guess, I don't know. But anyway, um, just want to let you guys know before you get into this one, if you don't want to watch it because of that, then go ahead and leave. I did add some music in the background, but let me know what you think. If this kind of issue happens again, would you rather have it just be silent or would you rather have some audio or something like that like I did here? Anyway. Let, um, just let me know in the comments below, and make sure to stay tuned for the pay-per-view. If you want to, you can just skip to the end of the matches, I guess. But anyway, be sure to enjoy the pay-per-view, and thank you for um, watching the video, I guess. Welcome, WWE Universe, to the Judgment Day pay-per-view. This is WWE 13 Universe Mode, episode 66, if I'm correct. And, of course, the highly anticipated Judgment Day pay-per-view is upon us. And as... Vader would say, could tonight be indeed Vader time, because we saw Shawn Michaels unable to compete tonight at the pay-per-view, which sparked this triple threat match between Vader, the British Bulldog, and Triple H. Now, Triple H trying to gain some retribution for his best friend, Shawn Michaels, as Michaels' injury was suffered at the hands of the British Bulldog. And wait, what, what a minute, this is Brian Pillman, Brian Pillman coming down to the ring, and it looked like... It glitched up there or something because I don't know anybody that walks like that while holding a chair. Anyway, so now Brian Pillman into the ring. He's attacking Vader with the chair. Like I was saying, Triple H. Okay, Brian Pillman, it looks like he's already leaving. Leaving. Yeah, he's already leaving the ring, but he's already hit Vader with that chair. And Brian Pillman, he had a very quick entrance and exit. That was his first appearance ever in this universe mode. Anyway, so we have here... Vader, actually no, Brian Pillman, the last time we had seen him, he was decimated by the Phenom, The Undertaker, so making his return in a big statement going after Vader. Anyway, Triple H here trying to gain retribution for Shawn Michaels after British Bulldog injured his tag team partner. And we have Vader who's trying to gain some payback on the British Bulldog as well from the Bulldog invading his handicap match against D-Generation X, the British Bulldog came out and attacked Vader. So Vader has a bone to pick with the British Bulldog as well. But Vader, he's also got some issues with Triple H. As we know, Vader, he destroyed Billy Gunn and the Road Dog, the New Age Outlaws, in separate one-on-one -on -one matches. And then he was booked into that handicap match against D-Generation X. So he has quite the history with D-Generation X. And that has led us to this battle, to this triple threat here tonight. We saw Vader win the Battle Royal on to, on War this past Tuesday, eliminating superstars like Mick Foley, the British Bulldog, and working with the British Bulldog to eliminate the Road Dog Jesse James, so that was a little shocking. Speaking of Road Dog, we'll be seeing them compete in a Tag Team Championship match later on tonight. They'll be defending their television tag team titles against... Their number one contenders, Too Cool, Grandmaster Sexay, and Scotty Too Hottie. As we saw, Too Cool defeated the Brood to get into that match. Later on, we're also going to see what was dubbed now a career-threatening match, courtesy of Vince McMahon. But wait a minute here, Triple H 
Spear through the barricade. He just took out the British Bulldog and speared him through the barricade. What a move by Triple H, and the British Bulldog could be out of this match. It could be just down to Vader and Triple H. But like I was saying, Mick Foley and Stone Cold Steve Austin will be competing. And I, did the fans just try to take that chair or something? I don't know what that was. Anyway, so it'll be Mick Foley versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. We don't know who Mick Foley is going to show up as. He could show up as Mankind, Cactus Jack, Dude Love, who knows exactly what his plans are, when he'll show up, and who he'll come as. But Vince McMahon, for the Judgment Day preview, what is usually just a package of highlights and other various odds and ends that lead into the pay-per-view that sum up the matches, Vince McMahon had a little bit of a statement before that. What is this? Vader, he's got British Bulldog up for a jackknife powerbomb onto the outside. And Vince McMahon made two statements, one be declaring the injury of Shawn Michaels that he would be unable to compete at the Judgment Day pay-per-view. We also learned that he would make the no-holds-barred match between Mick Foley and Stone Cold Steve Austin a career-threatening match. So whoever loses will be fired by Vince McMahon himself. And Vince also stated that he has a little bit of surprise. He has a surprise for the WWE fans here at this pay-per-view. So we're going to have to find out exactly what that is. We've heard some statements back in the locker room by Vince McMahon earlier on before, right before the pay-per-view. And he stated that the WWE universe, the WWF universe will be shocked. And that they, well, I don't, I don't know. Vince McMahon, he's just talking a big game. Can't, the, I don't know with Vince McMahon, he's always unpredictable. How will he deliver this su so-called surprise that he's had? We've seen a lot of surprises lately in this universe mode. Recently, this past week. But anyway, now as we see in this triple threat match, Triple H, nice backbreaker there. The pendulum backbreaker connects onto Vader on the outside. We see Vader sporting the black attire in all black attires. He just gets pile driven onto the pile driven to the floor. I don't know exactly how you want to what the verbiage of that would be, but Vader's been busted open by Triple H as the Bulldog throws him into the ring. And can these three please get into the ring? Oh my God! All right, so now. Kicked to the gut by Vader as he's sporting the all black attire, showing that he means business. Just all black. I'm not sure exactly who Vader has in mind, who he has the biggest grudge against, but whatever the case is, the Bulldog and Triple H, they may have spent too much energy taking each other out. They might have wanted to double team against Vader as Vader there with the snapmare elbow to the back of the head of Triple H. And as we know, we saw a trip. No, nice belly to throw belly to back throw there but we see Triple H has been busted open as well he and the British Bulldog have just worn each other out leading to this point when they probably should have been using that energy to take out Vader's Vader there's a power slam off the ropes as he had sent Triple H off the ropes and anyway now it looks like Vader trying to drag him away from the ropes maybe going for a cover one count and a kick out by the game Triple H and the cerebral assassin so far seems to be the target of Vader's onslaught at the moment as now they're back to the outside. Big DDT there by Triple H, and somehow Vader managed to go through the announce table. That's a really weird bump. So that's overselling to the max. Anyway, as now the British Bulldog just threw Vader at those chairs there at ringside into Michael Cole and Jerry Lawler. And there's a power slam by the British Bulldog onto the broken announce table, which may have cushioned the fall there possibly a little bit. It's the neck breaker there by the British Bulldog. And anyway, I don't know exactly what that was, but anyway, it seemed like the capture card sort of froze up there for a little bit. It's been doing that a little bit, but it's better than constant pixelation and stuff, so I make sure that the recording works for universe mode before I, um, like, usually I wait for the, like, it has a little playback screen, and I'll wait for the picture to freeze before I start doing anything, because then, even if there are a few occasional blips like that, it will work, and I'll be able to edit it in Vegas, Sony Vegas. Whereas, if it tries to play it back, there will most likely be some sort of error there, and then it won't edit for some reason. But anyway, Triple H now, setting up Vader. Vader Days made it to his feet here, but Triple H has got Vader. Pedigree! Pedigree to Vader, as British Bulldog enters the ring here. That's a cover. One, two, and no! The British Bulldog manages to save Vader at a count of two and a half, and he accidentally knocked out the ref, but okay. 
referee no sell on that one it looks like Vader I'm, what exactly is going on with Vader he's I think he's shocked that he just got pedigreed I don't know exactly what is going on he might be losing it here British Bulldog suplex connects on a Triple H and now Vader going over he's looking to capitalize hooks the leg one two three and Vader picks up the scraps from the British Bulldog and Vader gets the victory here pinning the cerebral assassin Triple H and Vader wins the triple threat match here you have to wonder what all types of momentum this builds for Vader as in singles competition he's been undefeated but anyway Vader as you can see here he's he's riled up this should be an epic pay-per-view let's keep going have I ever mentioned that I love Ken Shamrock's theme song that just good the guitar it's, it's just awesome anyway so we have our European Championship match here, coming off that triple threat match between Vader, Triple H, and the British Bulldog, in which Vader was victorious, just in case you decide to skip up to this point. We have Ken Shamrock, who lost his glo what was the Global Television Championship on the last episode of Heat. The Global TV title was then unified into the new rebranded European Championship, and this counts as Ken Shamrock's rematch clause cashing in here tonight at Judgment Day and on Heat he lost the title to Diamond Dallas Page in that six man battle royal DDP was the last man standing and Ken Shamrock was I don't think Ken Shamrock was eliminated by DDP so Ken Shamrock feels that he unfairly lost his championship as the title was taken from him and now we get this match here tonight at Judgment Day and this is set to be an epic contest. Nice calf kick to the face by Ken Shamrock. But we've seen in past weeks, DDP has had some issues with The Undertaker. The WWE Champion is Ken Shamrock. As DDP, I meant to say, gets the rope break there. But DDP, he's had some issues with The Undertaker in the past couple of weeks. With that mystery man who appears that, I don't know, who's just been appearing after Undertaker's matches on War. And distracting the dead man afterwards just trying to send some sort of a message Undertaker at first believed it was DDP as the first time the music played it was DDP's theme that's what Undertaker wants to believe that it was DDP's theme and DDP argued by saying that he was out there in that tag team match with the Undertaker and that he thought they were friends and that led into a match this past Tuesday on war it ended up being Undertaker getting the win in dominating fashion over DDP. DDP had a bit of, had a strong showing in that one, but he just couldn't overpower the Undertaker. He was able to showcase his durability, but however, it was just all one-sided offense from the Undertaker. And now DDP setting up Ken Shamrock here. He's got him up. And look at the power of DDP off the suplex to Ken Shamrock. But anyway, as it was DDP versus the Undertaker, Undertaker got the win. And we heard a new music this time, and a, this time we had a Tron show up on the screen. We had a sort of a little video show up on the Tron, and again, the capture card messed up there, but it'll work anyway. I don't know. I don't know why I decided to do this for the pay-per-view. Anywho. So now as we see, these two superstars are in a lockup, and neither superstar can overpower the other. But now it's DDP with the upper hand. Elbow to the face of Ken Shamrock, and their current... European champion looking to defend his title against Ken Shamrock. We have to admit that that beating that DDP took at the hands of The Undertaker this past Tuesday has to have some sort of effect on DDP in this match. As we see DDP Irish whips Ken Shamrock into the corner. And there's DDP went for the shoulder block with Ken Shamrock countered with a knee to the face. And there's a shoulder tackle of his own by Ken Shamrock. And now Shamrock setting up DDP on the top rope. DDP however kicks him off. And now DDP from the top rope Went for some sort of diving clothesline, but DDP, I mean, Ken Shamrock counters with a nice t catching T-bone suplex there. Nice, innovative counter by Ken Shamrock. And now DDP tried to dump onto the outside, but Shamrock able to hold on. And now DDP kicking Ken Shamrock down to the floor. And now this match on the outside, things could get extreme. DDP, the Irish Whip, sends Ken Shamrock into the barricade. And now DDP from behind, nice counter by Ken Shamrock into the headlock. And Ken Shamrock sends DDP face first into the steel ring post. And again a second time. And now DDP just throwing Ken Shamrock throwing DDP into the ring. And as we can see, Ken Shamrock sporting the green attire. And DDP sporting the white pants in this one. As we see, Ken Shamrock now. He has DDP by the arm, but DDP with a nice counter. Ducks behind. 
And now Ken Shamrock with by the arm forces DDP to get off of him. And now Shamrock going to the outside, trying to come up with some sort of offensive game plan out here. Ken Shamrock, German suplex onto the outside, and he just... DDP just landed right on the back of his head there. And w with that thin padding, that bear, that uh, it just offers no protection to the concrete floor below. And DDP just landed right on the back of his head there as we see. Managed to repair that barricade over there. Oh no, not again. Don't do this. We t no, don't do this again. DDP the spear through the barricade. And he just took out Ken Shamrock. As you see, Shamrock down by the European Championship. Could that be a sign? Could that be a foreshadowing sign as DDP spearing Ken Shamrock through the barricade? And that's a seven count, but DDP going back to the outside appears he doesn't want to win by a count out. And DDP just taunting to Ken Shamrock here. Uh, what what did that accomplish? What, what was Diamond Dallas Page thinking as he just went out? He could have had this match won by now, but instead he decided to get cocky. He would... He would he let his arrogance get the better from there. And now Ken Shamrock's back up onto his feet. And DDP, he could have had his, this match won, but instead, he didn't even try to get Shamrock back into the ring. He just went out, taunted in front of him, and went back into the ring. Whereas he could have tried to win with honor, and I don't know exactly what DDP is trying to prove there. That didn't really prove much. And now, anyway, what is this? Oh, a nice fireman's carry reverse slam style maneuver there by DDP. Thumb to the eye by Ken Shamrock. But DDP not proving anything, just that his arrogance got the better from there. That could be that could have cost DDP his championship here. Ken Shamrock, if he could just get some offense going. If Shamrock wins this one, it's all the loss goes to DDP. It's all on DDP. It would be all his fault. He had this match won. But now DDP off the neck breaker, hooks the leg. One. And no, Ken Shamrock kicks out at a count of one off the hangman's neckbreaker. Now what is this? Ken Shamrock looked like he might have been going for something big there as he caught the leg of DDP, but now DDP has the upper hand. And now DDP, jumping arm breaker, working on the arm of Ken Shamrock there. And now DDP, now he's looking to put Ken Shamrock away. DDP spins him around. And now what is this? He's setting him up here. DDP, what's he gonna do here? Diamond Clash connects. DDP connects with a Diamond Clash. That fall away face buster type maneuver. Here's the cover, hooks the leg, one. Two. No, not a two count. Ken Shamrock kicks out. And Shamrock, I don't know where he's still getting this resiliency. Where he's getting all of this energy. He's got to be pure instinct at this point. Just pure... I don't know. It's just... Oh, now Ken Shamrock. He's in trouble here. As DDP connects with the three jabs. And now the discus clothesline combination drops Ken Shamrock. And now DDP hooks the leg. One. No, another kick out by Ken Shamrock. As Shamrock... Still somehow managing to stay alive in this match. Shamrock, the snapmare takedown, and a fist drop. Nice move. Nice combination there by Ken Shamrock. And Shamrock, there's a kick to this. Just stomping on the head of DDP there. And now, oh, DDP out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. He connects with a diamond cutter. And DDP, this could be it, but no, Ken Shamrock rolling out of the ring. That was the only escape. DDP, you had to think DDP had him off the diamond cutter. But Ken Shamrock wisely realizing where he was in the ring, rolling outside. And now Ken Shamrock, again, Shamrock with the German suplex to the outside, dropping DDP right on the back of his head. And now Shamrock, oh, nice counter, and a tilt-a-whirl side slam. Nice move by DDP, referee now at a five count. And Diamond Dallas Page re-enters the ring. Referee to count of six, Shamrock back up to his feet and back into the ring here. And as we see these two superstars once again in a lockup, but Shamrock may have suffered too much damage to be able to outpower DDP here. And off the atomic drop, Diamond Dallas Page setting him up here. And an elbow drop. Nice move by Diamond Dallas Page. And Page currently with the upper hand. But no, Shamrock reached the eyes of DDP. And now Shamrock looking to get the, gain the upper hand in this one. DDP, he had him by the arm. And now the Irish whip into the corner. DDP setting him up on the top rope there. And what is DDP trying to do here? Oh no, we've seen this before. Diamond Dallas Page has Shamrock up on the top rope. Superplex off the top rope. And now DDP hooks the leg. One, two, three, and it's over. Diamond Dallas Page retain, retains his European Championship off that superplex from the top rope. And after all the damage Shamrock has taken, that was just the straw that broke the camel's back. The proverbial camel's back. That was just... The la that all the damage just caught up to him there 
in that superplex, and it was enough to put away Ken Shamrock. So DDP, still your European champion here at the Judgment Day pay-per-view. We're gonna have to wonder who could be Diamond Dallas Page's next challenger following this pay-per-view. And on to the third match on our pay-per-view card here as we see Road Dog Jesse James, and the badass Billy Gunn, the New Age Outlaws, you're defending. Television Tag Team Champions are going up against the team of Scotty Tuhati and Grandmaster Sexay. Too cool as they defeated the Brood this past Tuesday on war, defeating the Brood, Edge, and Christian to become the number one contenders and get this title opportunity against the New Age Outlaws for the Television Tag Team Championships here tonight. And as we see, Billy Gunn off the tag. And this is good double teamwork, good teamwork there by the veteran tag team of Road Dog and Billy Gunn. The New Age Outlaws, they have held those television tag team titles since day one in this universe mode. Defeating the likes of the Hardy Boys. And e they even defeated at the breakdown pay-per-view. We had that whole tag team tournament to be crowned number one contenders. And as you see, Billy Gunn was just driving the elbows into the shoulders of Sky Tuhati, but Sky Tuhati with the counter off the DDT, and he drops Billy Gunn to the mat. And now as we see, he was going for a tag there, and he connects, he makes the tag to Grandmaster Sexay, but now it's Billy Gunn still on the offense. And now, Tornado DDT driving the face of Grandmaster Sexay, and the mat, nice clothesline there by Billy Gunn, and now he's just smashing the head of Grandmaster Sexay into the mat. Billy Gunn, the powerhouse of the New Age Outlaws, showcasing that here in his offensive style. Grandmaster Sexay trying to fight back with the Enziguri, but a nice drop to a hold takedown by Billy Gunn, shut down the momentum of Grandmaster Sexay. And now it's Billy Gunn, hip toss deck breaker connects onto Grandmaster Sexay, and he just sent Sky to to the outside. Oh, now Billy Gunn, he set, he's setting him up here. Grandmaster Sexay could be in trouble, Grant. Billy Gunn. He drops in there, setting him up for the Famouser, and it connects. Grandmaster Sexay off the Famouser. Billy Gunn hooks the leg. Two count, and three, and just like that, your tag team champions retain the titles. The New Age Outlaws get the victory over Too Cool and retain their television tag team championships in a, a pretty quick match here. What could possibly be the quickest match on the card. And anyway, Billy Gunn and Road Dog with the win over two cools. I don't know what the heck the capture card is doing here, speeding it up. This is ridiculous. But anyway, the New Age Outlaws get the win and retain the Tag Team Championships. And on to high, arguably one of the high, most highly anticipated matchups on this card here tonight. One of our two main events as we see Mick Foley showing up as himself. No gimmicks. Mick Foley just coming out as the hardcore legend. He just came out as himself, no masks, no gimmicks. So it'll be Mick Foley going up against Stone Cold and Mick Foley. I don't know if this is a sign of mind games by Mick Foley or by that Stone Cold has gotten in the head of, Ma of Mick Foley as him just coming out as himself after Stone Cold's comments about he could wear any mask and Stone Cold wouldn't give a damn. But as we see Stone Cold now, right now with the upper hand, yeah, just firing away with those left hands to the face of Man Mick Foley. Mankind, Cactus Jack, Dude Love all rolled into one. Mick Foley here tonight. Both these superstars are defending their careers. And we've seen Mick Foley. Both these superstars are former WWF champions. Mick Foley, at the beginning of this universe mode, had three victories over Stone Cold Steve Austin in the very first month. And then it was Stone Cold eventually a few a few weeks later wanting to seek some vengeance, going after Mick Foley, getting victories over the two faces, which were Dude Love and Mankind. And then in that six-man battle royal, Stone Cold was eliminated by the British Bulldog before he could ever get a shot in at Mick Foley, and what the hell. I don't know if my video is doing this. I don't know if like the actual video that you're watching is doing this, but when I keep watching it, so I can do the commentary right now, it keeps skipping. Like, I mean, it, the screen will freeze up and then it'll do something and then go like fast forward or something like that. It's just really fucking stupid. Anyway, atomic drop there by Mick Foley. And there's a TDT on a Stone Cold Steve Austin. But Vince McMahon, we heard some rumors backstage earlier on tonight 
that Vince McMahon in a backstage yeah in a backstage interview which we were unable to air Vince McMahon saying that there was some major changes about to come to the WWF as you see Stone Cold just tossed Man Mick Foley into the crowd. I don't know why I want to call him Mankind. You see Stone Cold right now with the upper hand off that move. But Vince McMahon saying that there will be some major changes coming to the WWF in the coming weeks. We're going to have to, make sure. We're going to, have to stick around to find out what those changes could be. Mr. McMahon, we know he said he has a surprise for the WWF Universe later on tonight, so we're going to have to find out what that could be. You have to think Stone Cold might have been going for something there, but Mick Foley with the counter off the hip toss, and now he's got Stone Cold over the apron, and there's a nice elbow to the face of Steve Austin. Austin could have possibly been going for the Luthez press, and now with the shoulder tackle, sends Mick, Mick Foley to the outside as the ropes kind of glitched up there. Oh, and there's a shot to the back by Stone Cold. And now, Mankind sends Stone Cold into the barricade. And now, it's Mankind. It's Stone Cold's turn to take a take a ride into the crowd. As the crowd are getting, those in the front row are definitely get, getting a piece of this action. It's Stone Cold and Mick Foley both getting sent into the crowd. And see, we have a fan trying to offer up a drink maybe to one of these superstars. As Stone Cold grabs the cup. Maybe he's a little thirsty here. I'm not exactly sure what he has in mind. But anyway... As we see, it froze up again on me. And now Stone Cold just slapping Mick Foley in the face with a cup after spitting the soda in his face. I thought maybe Stone Cold might have been thirsty and he wanted a drink, but instead he gave Mick Foley a drink, I guess you could say, as he just throws Mick Foley into the steel steps. And now Stone Cold possibly looking for a weapon here. But it looks like that cup's in the way. And Mick Foley's going under the apron now. As we see Stone Cold now grabbing... Is that a novelty title belt, it looks like? Mick Foley's got a sledgehammer now. And goddammit, these weapons are in the way. I'm trying to grab a weapon under the ring. But all the, all the other items are in the way now. Mankind, Mick Foley with the sledgehammer. Didn't quite get all of Stone Cold there, but he did manage to connect a little bit with that sledgehammer. Dropping Stone Cold to his knees. And now, Austin, he's got the sledgehammer. And now I don't know what just happened. He might have... Piper extended his knee or something, he might have pulled a muscle. Maybe he got a cramp or something, I don't know. Mick Foley off the elbow drop now as he sent Stone Cold into the corner. Austin now, he's got Mick Foley up against the ropes, dropping him now down to the second rope. And now Stone Cold going off the ropes here, what's he gonna do? Oh, and he just landed right on the throat of Mick Foley. Mick Foley's throat just going right across the apron there, or the ring ropes, I should say. And now Stone Cold's got a steel, not a steel chair, Stone Cold's got a table, but now Mick Foley taking the table away from Austin. And now Austin getting in the ring to avoid the oncoming table strike by Mick Foley. And now Stone Cold back to the outside. Now he's got a kendo stick here. And now, look, he went to go and cane him in the face, but Mick Foley was able to catch it. Stone Cold now taking back, oh, he, again, this time he went to the ribs of Mick Foley, but again, Oh, now Mick Foley tried to get a shot in with a kendo stick, but Stone Cold was able to block it. Real quick, I want to let you guys know that when I was recording that, there was if it looked like there might have been a little bit of a jump cut, that's because when I was recording, I was interrupted and I had to pause the game. Anyway, Mick Foley just sends Stone Cold right through the table there, off the inverted face buster suplex. And now Stone Cold, he's got that kendo stick. I always want to call it a Singapore cane. And now with a shot to the head there, but I don't think he quite got all of Mick Foley. And now he's just striking the back of Mick Foley with that kendo stick. And now there's the elbow across the face by Mick Foley. And Mick Foley, we've seen him take a lot of punishment in this in past matches. In this match as well, but we've seen his durability. He's able to fight back, elbow to the back of the head of Mick Foley. And now Stone Cold, knee to the face of Mick Foley. And now Stone Cold with the Singapore cane, I mean the kendo stick to the face. I really don't know what the difference between the two is. Anyway, hooks the leg. One. Didn't know Mick Foley kicks out. But I don't know, like, if there's a difference in appearance. If one's, like, thicker than the other or whatever. Because they're probably made of different material or something. But anyway. If I... I don't, I don't think it really matters if I call it either or. Anyway. Stone Cold now hung up upside down in the corner there. And Mick Foley just driving the foot into the face. And now Mick Foley is the upper hand. Oh, no. Mick Foley's got that kindness to... Okay, he put it down. What could Mick Foley be thinking here? As we know, he's got some pretty hardcore, extreme thoughts. We've seen him do sadistic things in the past. Elbow drop to Stone Cold. 
And now Mick Foley, what does he have in mind? What's he got planned? And the Texas Rattlesnake fires away with the Luthes press, and there's the right hands to the face. And Mick Foley, he's been busted open by the Texas Rattlesnake. And now, off the top rope, there's a fist drop, or maybe a knee drop, I'm not exactly sure. Hooks the leg, one, and no, a kick out by Mick Foley. But not too often do we see Steve Austin go to the top rope there, but he did right there, and now, Stone Cold. He's got Mick Foley up on the top rope here. Forearm to the face. And now we saw this in the past European Championship match. Stone Cold a suplex, a superplex off the top rope. And now he hooks the leg. One. Two, no, Mick Foley again able to kick out. What is it going to take to put this man away? There's a big haymaker shot to the face. And now Mick Foley. Mick Foley's got the upper hand here. He's setting up Steve Austin. He's calling for maybe Mr. Sacco. No, Mick Foley. Butterfly DDT, the double underhook DDT, and now Austin's been busted open. Mick Foley goes under the cover, and what is this Vince McMahon? Vince McMahon has shown up here, and what is this Mankind's out of it? Stone Cold with the cover, two count, you can't do this! Three, and Stone Cold gets a victory, thanks to an assist from Mr. McMahon. And right out of the gate here, looks like Lita's got the upper hand in this, our Women's Championship rematch from the last pay-per-view. Lita losing her title at Over the Edge to Trish Stratus using her rematch clause here tonight at Judgment Day, similar to the fashion of Ken Shamrock use, using his rematch for the European Championship earlier on tonight. And as we can see so far, Alita with the upper hand here, setting up Trish for a back suplex. Nice move by Alita. And Alita, she, ha she started this universe mode with the title, defending it at the breakdown pay-per-view. But then at Over the Edge, she lost it to Trish Stratus. And now Trish Stratus defending her title in the rematch against Lita here tonight at Judgment Day. We haven't seen too much out of these divas, but they've had a star-studded history in the past. Lita, nice tornado DDT, sending Trish Stratus face first into the mat. And Lita, she is an extreme diva. She will put her body and her career on the line, as we've seen in her past matches, to put away her opponent. Especially if it's a diva with such history like Trish Stratus. Lita will go to any means to be able to, to to be able to recapture her championship here tonight. And now as we see Trish Stratus, Irish whips Lita into the corner and there's the body splash by Trish Stratus. And Trish now has Lita up against the ropes here and drops her to the mat. And now there's the sort of a choke slingshot there by Trish Stratus. And now she's got Lita by the arm and just driving the arm into the mat. Trish now there's the kick to the back of Lita. And now, Trish Stratus, she's setting up Lita for something. What's she going to do here? Oh, they're in a lockup. Which diva can overpower the other, and neither can get the advantage. But now it's Lita who has the upper hand. Lita now setting up Trish for a neck breaker. Nice move by Lita. And Lita now, knee to the face of Trish Stratus. And Lita, what's she going to do next? But Trish is able to counter whatever Lita was going for next. Trish had a counter. Oh, and now she's setting her up. What, what does Trish have in mind here? It looks like she's maybe trying to finish her here. It's a little early, but anyway, Trish pushes her off. And there's the chick kick right to the side of the head. Nice, vicious kick to the side of the head there by Trish. That put away Lita at the last pay-per-view. One. Then no, Trish able to, Lita able to kick out at a count of one. That was the chick kick that put away Lita at over the edge. That's the kick that won the championship for Trish Stratus, but it was not the case here tonight. And as Lita just uncovered the announce table there, we have these two divas now brawling on the outside. Lita just gets sent right into those steel steps. The ringside area is just being destroyed here tonight. And now Trish, there was an elbow to the face, but Lita able to counter, sending Trish into the ring. And Lita, elbow to the face. And she's measuring her for something else. Lita, leg drop on the apron. Nice move. Shades of the Phenom, The Undertaker, whom we will see later on tonight defending his WWE Championship against Bret the Hitman Hart. And now Lita, Irish Whip, but she pulls her back, and there's an elbow to the face of Trish Stratus. And now it's Lita with the upper hand. Lita now picking up Trish Stratus. What's she going to go for? But Trish able to go out of the end. I think Lita might have been going for a power bomb or a pile driver. But Lita, Trish was able to reverse it into an arm drag. But now it's still Lita back with the upper hand as she sends Trish flying to the outside. And Lita now setting up Trish Stratus. She's got her daze. Trish is out on her feet. Lita now setting her up, positioning her on top of the announce table here. And now Lita, she's going up onto the apron here. What's she going to do? 
Lita, she's, she looks like she might be second guessing herself, and now Trish is able to roll off the apron, or roll off the announce table. So Lita, she second guessed herself there. I don't know exactly what she was thinking, if she didn't want to, she was concerning maybe the possibility of injuring Trish Stratus. These two divas are friends, but I don't know. What could Lita possibly have been thinking there that made her hesitate? That could have just cost her the title here. Is now Trish back in with the upper hand. Nice face crusher. But Lita may have just cost herself the title. She had a shot to possibly hit a high impact maneuver on Trish Stratus. And now it's Trish with the upper hand because of Lita's hesitation. But now Lita back into this. Lita, maybe, I don't know exactly what she could have thought there. But now it's Trish slapping the face of Lita. Oh, looks like she's trying to slap some sense in her here. That would be my thoughts. And now Trish, there's a kick to the gut. And a DDT, sending Lita face first into the mat. And now Trish. She's, she's now got Lita back on her feet. There's a rolling elbow to the face. And now into the cover. She's got her hand on the rope there, but a kick out by Lita at a count of one. Kick to the gut by Lita now. As Lita maybe looking to get her second win. There's a face plant, the face slam into the mat by Lita. And now Lita. Here we go. There's the Northern Lights suplex into the cover. And the referee couldn't even get there in time to get a one count as Trish manages to kick out. And now, Lita with a nice reverse DDT there. And now she hooks the leg. One. And this time the referee managed to actually get off a one count. But still, it was not enough to put away Trish. And now Trish has Lita against up into the ropes there. Could we maybe see some Stratus faction? And no. Another body splash by Trish Stratus. I was thinking we could have possibly seen some Stratus faction there. But it was not meant to be. Trish now, elbow to the face of Lita. And now Trish, she's setting her up. She's already got, if she might be, it looks like she might be going for that chick kick again. Trish now shoving her away. And Trish, the second chick kick, and that one just knocked Lita right out. Lita's out of it. Here's the cover, doesn't even hook a leg. One, two, three, and Trish Stratus retains the WWE Women's Championship. And you have to imagine that hesitation by Lita earlier on, that had, that cost her the match. She had a chance to put away Trish Stratus, and she didn't. And Trish retains the title. And on to our main event contest for the evening. We have Brett, the Hitman Hart, challenging the Phenom, the WWF champion, the Undertaker, for the title here tonight. And earlier on, a hidden, one, I guess, a stipulation added to the match earlier on by Vince McMahon behind the scenes. This is now a Hell in the Cell contest. I don't know what Vince could have been thinking. He talks about things being good for business. Why would he not announce this? You have to think this could have possibly had some more pay-per-view buys or something. But anyway, I'm not going to... I guess don't cross the boss, so I'm not going to talk anymore on that subject. But anyway, this is, I guess, to prevent any outside interference because we know Undertaker, we have that mystery man. Maybe Undertaker could have possibly requested this. I don't know. I don't know exactly why Vince McMahon decided to make this Hell in the Cell match without just suddenly making this without even alerting anybody earlier on tonight. So anyway, we have this Hell in the Cell match to keep anybody, to keep any outside interference, but we've seen superstars break through this Satan structure before, so I don't, I don't know, we'll have to find out if this will indeed serve its purpose and keep the super, keep any other outside interference from occurring as we see the abdominal stretcher by Bret Hart, but Undertaker able to counter as Bret Hart undoubtedly trying to wear out the ribs of the Undertaker, set him up for the sharpshooter, and Undertaker now off the leg drop, Bret Hart able to counter, ducks behind the Undertaker, but Undertaker with a counter of his own, now is Bret by the head in the headlock, and now Undertaker has him up against the apron there, or against the ropes I meant to say, but anyway, went for the clothesline, and Undertaker countered with a back body drop. And now Bret Hart has Undertaker in a headlock, but Undertaker is able to counter. And I should be done getting drinks now for the rest of the match. Undertaker pushes him off, and now he's got him in a headlock. Obviously trying to reposition for some other type of offense here. Undertaker, there's an elbow to the kidney. And he connects with a second. We saw him unveil that maneuver last Tuesday in his match against DDP. Working the kidneys of Bret Hart there. And now, nice back body drop by Bret Hart. And I guess turn about his fair play. As we saw Undertaker utilize that move. Nice bulldog by the Hitman. But Bret Hart using Undertaker's own backdrop against him. And now, again, the abdominal stretch is locked in. 
but Undertaker, he's just gonna be able to outpower this. And as you can see, Undertaker able to use his strength. Nice hip toss takedown. But Undertaker just powering out of the abdominal stretch hold there. But Bret Hart, he's gonna have to do something to wear out the Undertaker for a sharpshooter, but I don't know if trying to go for some sort of submission hold would be the best idea now. He might want to try and go for some high impact moves to the gut, to the ribs there. But anyway, Undertaker just with those big right hands clobbing away at the face of Bret Hart, now just driving that knee right into the face as Bret Hart seated at the bottom turnbuckle. Undertaker now, the Irish whip, and he sends Bret Hart to the outside. No, Bret Hart manages to hang on. And again, another shoulder spear there. Sends Bret Hart crashing into the steel of the Hell in the Cell structure. And now Bret Hart, the hard Irish whip, sends Undertaker back into the ring. And as we saw, Bret Hart was already sent into those steel steps. There are weapons under this ring that were unable to be used in past Hell in the Cell structures. But due to the size of this structure, meant to keep superstars inside, it has become a lot more extreme with those rep weapons underneath the ring. And now the Undertaker. He's got Bret Hart by the arm. This is vintage Undertaker to, wear, to work on the arm, as he has done in past matches, possibly setting him up for the old school maneuver. And now the Undertaker setting up Bret Hart. The Irish Whip sends him into the corner and went for the clothesline, but Bret Hart able to counter with a clothesline of his own. Nice move. But now Undertaker back to his feet immediately with a clothesline to drop Bret Hart. And now Undertaker scoop slam, dropping the Hitman right on his arm. And now Undertaker, again, a jumping arm breaker, working down the arm, wearing down the arm of Bret Hart. And now the Undertaker. Now he's got the arm, and it looks like he's setting up for that maneuver. He's going up to the second rope, and now Undertaker positioning himself up on the top rope here. Undertaker, he's going for it. Old school connects onto Bret Hart. And this could be it. Undertaker could be nearing, he could be nearing I don't know, I don't want to say it that way, but he could be close to retaining his title. Undertaker, look at the height off that choke slam as he just drives Bret Hart through the mat, sending, drives him into the mat, sending him to hell. This could be it, hooks the leg. One, two, and no, Bret Hart manages to kick out at a count of two. And now the Undertaker, the Irish Whip, sending Bret Hart over the top rope here. And Undertaker going to the outside now. But Bret Hart able to fight him off. Undertaker had him by the leg, but Bret Hart was able to push him away and now Undertaker just chopping down Bret Hart off the apron and Undertaker nice counter by Bret Hart sending Undertaker into the Hell in a Cell structure and Undertaker's so-called playground is now working against him and the Undertaker now as he was just driven right into the Hell in a Cell structure with a counter of his own Irish whip sending Bret Hart into the steel and now Undertaker there's the scoop slam after driving Bret Hart into the Hell in a Cell and now Undertaker once again into the cell and with another scoop slam. And Undertaker now. Another Irish whip sending Bret Hart into the opposite side of the steel. And now Undertaker setting him up. Maybe he's going to powerbomb him through the structure. But no, Bret Hart with a counter into a DDT on the steel steps there. And Undertaker could be out of it. He was just DDT'd on the steel steps. Bret Hart raking the eyes. Undertaker able to fight back. And there's a big boot to the face by the Phenom. And Undertaker now, he's got the steel steps. Went to strike Bret Hart with him, but Bret Hart was able to block it. And now Bret Hart's in control of the steel steps there. Undertaker could be in trouble. And Bret Hart, there's a shot with the steel steps to the face of the Undertaker. However, he didn't quite get all of it there. And now, Bret Hart, what's he going to do here? Just holding the steel steps, waiting for Undertaker to reach, to get back to his feet here. He's trying to go for something, free, something bigger, but Undertaker kicking the steel steps, dropping Bret Hart to the floor. And now Undertaker... Bret Hart between a rock and a hard place, so to speak. He was caught between the steel steps and the, st and the helmet cell structure. Undertaker now going to the top rope here. And there's a double axe handle. But he was unable to drop Bret Hart as Bret Hart put down the steel steps to sort of cushion the impact, I guess. Undertaker now getting the steel steps out of the way, throwing them into the ring. And Bret Hart, he had just tripped over the steel steps. And now he gets driven right into the hell in the cell structure. And the Undertaker... Looking for a DDT here, but Bret Hart able to counter. And Bret Hart, there's a nice side rush and leg sweep counter. And now Bret Hart just trying to survive in this one. Belly to belly suplex to The Undertaker. And now Bret Hart standing him back up onto his feet here. Bret Hart, but no, the Irish whip counter by The Undertaker. Sending Bret Hart once again into the steel. 
And again, Undertaker just picking up Bret Hart and driving him into the Hell in the Cell structure. And Undertaker signifying for Bret Hart to rest in peace. Undertaker sends him into the Hell in the Cell. And now Bre Undertaker, he's measuring Bret Hart here for something, I think. Went for the gut kick, but there's the flying clothesline by the Undertaker. And now Undertaker, the Irish Whip. And now what's he going to do? Oh my god, the Undertaker. He tried to go for this earlier. Undertaker power bombs Bret Hart through the Hell in the Cell. He just busted him through the cage wall. And about keeping this in, about being able to keep outside interference, now there's a giant hole in the, in the, there's a giant hole in the cell wall. That If it was meant to keep superstars out, now they can just go right through there as Undertaker had a nice uppercut. And now sending Bret Hart headfirst into the steel ring post. As Undertaker just fired away with those body shots. And then finally the uppercut. Bret Hart just sent, with that leg sweep takedown, sent Undertaker right into the steel steps. Legs, another leg sweep take, takedown, the dragon leg sweep or something like that. Bret Hart now, maybe setting him up for what could have been a camel clutch or something like that, but Undertaker able to counter. Bret Hart, Undertaker went for the DDT. Bret Hart with a nice counter into a side wrestling leg sweep. And now, Bret Hart, he's got Undertaker. There's the camel clutch, it's locked in now. And Undertaker, he's trying to crawl. He's trying to get away here. Undertaker, can he make it back to his feet here? Undertaker just overpowering Bret Hart in that submission hold. And just driving Bret Hart into the mat. And now the Undertaker, DDT to Bret Hart. And this is not looking good for the Hitman here. Undertaker just with that Fujira arm bar wearing down the arm of Bret Hart. Which Undertaker had already targeted earlier on in this match with the old school maneuver. And now Undertaker... He's got Bret Hart, and that's the last stride powerbomb by The Undertaker. And The Undertaker hooks the leg. No, he doesn't hook the leg, and that's why Bret Hart was able to kick out. I cannot. I have stressed this so many times in these matches that when superstars don't hook the leg, it gives their superstar, ch it gives their opponent a chance to kick out. And off the flying clothesline is Bret Hart showing his resilience, kicking out of the last ride. I don't know if Bret Hart's going to be able to kick out of this. Undertaker, the Tombstone pile driver. Rest in peace, Bret Hart. Crossing the arms. One, two, three, and The Undertaker is still your WWE champion here at Judgment Day, or should I say the WWF champion. The Undertaker, Judgment Day, the final resting place of Bret Hart. The Undertaker was the judge, jury, and executioner of Bret Hart here in his domain, the Hell in the Cell structure. And The Undertaker retains the WWF Championship here at Judgment Day. Bret Hart, a valiant effort, but The Undertaker was just too much for the Hitman, getting put through the Hell in the Cell structure. If you made it this far, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new around here. Thanks for watching one hellacious pay-per-view. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. Was it a good pay-per-view? What was your favorite match? Keep on YouTubing.